And I was in London for two days. So the first day, I took everybody down to the Court of Justice, the World Court. So we got pictures of everybody walking around the Courts of Justice. And uh, the second day, we brought everybody back into a uh, meeting hall, and we explained what we were doing. And these people were begging for, like, templates. I said, okay, you want a couple of templates? Here's a couple of templates. And you should have seen, man, as soon as I came, put a couple of templates up on the screen, everybody was coming with their cameras and uh, cell phones taking pictures of the template. I said, look, people, don't go word for word verbatim what this template says. Learn what these words mean. I said, because you're going to get challenged on them, and you're going to, they're going to try you and, and see if you could make heads or tails of what I wrote, but don't think that this is some sort of a form that's going to break all the walls down for you. I said, yeah. I said, Bali will tell you. I said, there's another guy who did a, a came to one of Bali's uh, seminars in uh, Coventry, not in London. We were in London. <clears throat> I said, and the guy said there was like 50 or 150 of you folks that went in with the simple claim, I, a man, claim the wrong of trespass C exhibit A. And he said, every single one of them were rejected. And I said to Bali, that's great. And he's like, what? No, it's bad. No, it's great. Every man gets rejected. I said, you let me know when any man on planet Earth just went after the object of his desire, say some beautiful woman, just walked straight up to her and said, honey, you're going with me and you're going to live with me for the rest of my life and you're going to give me sex twice a day and you're going to pump out three kids and you're going to cook and clean and do everything I order you to do. You understand that? No man on planet Earth. It never worked that easy for a man. So when you're a man, I said to Bali, you tell all these people, if you're a man, you know how to handle rejection. Because a real man knows it don't come that damn easy. So he said, yeah, they said, oh, reject, 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 reject. I said, good. Now, how does a man handle rejection? He comes out of him with what? Candy or flowers or a nice greeting card. What do I tell you people to do? Write a nice card to them, so send them a nice letter, uh, write a sweetness to them, right? I don't say come out of them with bitterness and anger and frustration and, and fear. No. Make believe you're courting a woman. Make believe you're pursuing her. And, and make believe you're prosecuting, because that's what prosecuting means to pursue. You're pursuing her. You're prosecuting her. You're courting her. How are you going to do it? How are you going to win her over? you got to act like a man. Now, yeah, can a man just come at them with a gun? and say, uh, we're going to take over, and this is the way it's going to be? Yeah, you, you can do that with a woman. Yeah, you can say, you know, I, I hear the gun, and I'm going to take over, and this is the way it's going to be. Or you're going to kill him with kindness. You're going to say, well, you know, here's a lovely letter. Uh, I believe that uh, I'm a man, and I believe that somebody rejected this, and who's the man or who's the woman who rejected or interfered with my right to access this court? You know, who, who, who wrote this? Who wrote this that I'm rejected? Who, who believes that I'm a reject, or who believes that this paper, you know, who believes such a thought? You know, why did somebody make such a, a claim? You know, who trespassed on my case? You know, just write something nice and sweet. you got to learn how to handle rejection. See, so these people all ran in with this one-page claim, with this one two-cents claim, and they were all rejected. And they're like, well, pff, fuck, that didn't work. <laughs> of course it yeah. doesn't work. It's, it's, a, it's a form. They see this form coming, and they go, oh, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another you know what? They'll say, you know what? Reject, reject, reject. Now, let's see out of that 150, the one person or the one man, the one woman who knew how to handle rejection and did the next step. Because the other 149 are just going to go back home and suck their thumb and say, well, that didn't work. Yeah, you screwed me. Right. Who, well, not me. I mean, I didn't, nobody yeah, screwed anybody. That's the general. They just, they no, they were re no. These are 150 people that just pulled it off my website. I didn't screw nobody. They oh, took no, the no. form off. The, I'm saying they took the form off my website. This Iron Man claim wrong trespass to Exhibit A. They, they took it off of the Jesse and Jonathan thing that I put for free for everybody to read. So they thought that they were going to take it and they were going to change their name, change their exhibits, and they thought it was going to work like it worked for Jesse. The only problem is when Jesse went to court. She, I beat her up for 10 days verbally, mentally. I just beat her to toughen her up. And I said, this is what you, this is exactly how you're going to say it. This is, you're going to point, you're going to stand firmly, you're going to, you know, square your shoulders, you're going to flay your nostrils. This is, you're going to act like a fucking man. You're going to make a damn claim. 
somebody's trespassed, somebody's done you wrong, you require the meter, I order you, this is the way, I don't give a damn. You know, that's what you're going to do. You're going to play it just like that. You're going to act it all the way through. It's an act. So act like a defendant. Act like a victim. Act like somebody that's been done wrong. Act. But just putting a piece of paper in there and just saying, well, then you come to court and you're a cupcake. He's like, that's not how a real man would act. That's not how a real man would pursue a court of woman. He wouldn't do that. That's ridiculous. He's a marshmallow. No woman's going to earn his. He's not going to earn her respect. It's an act. They want to see if you're really a man, if you can really pull this off. Yeah, just like I that. have a, a notice that uh, I'm preparing for an officer. Uh, I actually did something stupid and called my father in to get transported to a mental hospital because I showed up at home and he was running around with his clothes off and I didn't want him to go outside and get arrested. So I called 911 and they sent police over and I knew he wasn't going to go peacefully because he was so out of his head. And so I, I handcuffed him to a pole so he wouldn't get beat up, you know, trying to get away from these guys and stuff. And and they came and then... Uh, you know, took forever and put foot shackles on him and then switched the handcuffs over and we're walking him to the car. Suppose I thought I was going to get to go with him to admit him to the hospital. But then he starts, he spit on two of the officers while he was in, in my house. And, uh, and then once in my house and then once in the driveway. And then they arrested him and now he's got uh, two counts of sliming, which is assault with bodily fluids. And he's looking at, at two years. So I was going to be his next friend because he's just scared. He doesn't have any memory of the event. He was blacked out for a couple of days. Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably going to go pretty easy on him. You know, they're just going to say he was not in his mental state. You know, he didn't, wasn't in a proper mental state, that he was, you know, incapacitated at the time. You know, there's a, you know, chemical imbalance or whatever. So you, you know, know what? I should go with the property and man. Uh, aspect, what? I should just oh, they, they, they're probably just going to, since it happened in his home and it didn't happen in the public, you know what I'm saying? You know, these men well, had to understand the dangers that they were in when they crossed into somebody else's jurisdiction. It's just like I said, you know, if if you cross into, if you go into somebody else's castle, you know, you better, you know, better know what the Queen of Hearts is going to do to you when you cross into her threshold and when you cross into her jurisdiction. You better understand, oh, isn't this the queen that always yells off with their heads? Yeah, then why am I here messing with this lady, playing with this woman? Doesn't she kill everybody? Yeah. Well, what makes me think I'm going to be any different? So like I said, you know, you just say, you know, thank you for showing up. If there's a man who uh, claims that my dad spitting on him has caused him any loss or injury or or any kind of uh, cruel damage, any kind of tangible damage, not mental damage, can you please give us a bill and we'll compensate them for the, the dry cleaning or uh, whatever? And you try yeah. to compensate. You just try to compensate them for for what your dad did. Can I read you the letter that um, I was going to send to him, and you can tell me if it's bad or? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, it what I'm trying to say critical. is, you, you know, and I know what your dad did wasn't like the right thing to do. wasn't proper. Oh no! So what not say, you just you just write a letter, so basically saying I was not in my full mental faculties, and you know if I did cause harm or injury to any man, can you tend to me a bill so I could settle a debt? Okay. That's basically, I, I did that's have basically. that written out to the officer. I wrote, uh, you know, greetings. He, I was a man that asked for help getting my father to the hospital. He spit on you. I accept full responsibility since I was the one that called you here, and you know anything, any verified claim. No, liability. You can say liability, not responsibility. You say you bear all liability. You assume all liability. Okay. Just because, like I said, to go if they pass it off to the legal department, if there's certain words you use, like I assume all liability, then the, then the, then they're like, oh, a lawyer wrote this. Mm-hmm. You say responsibility. So they just need money. They just need, yeah, they just said responsibility. Then you just sound like Joe Sixpack. Okay. So sometimes I try to sound, I try to sound like. You know, the people I'm talking to, like if I'm talking to a three-year-old, I'll say goo-goo and gaga a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I try to get to the level of the, the person I'm communicating with. And that's what people seem to say to me, that I have, you know, uh, an ability to do that, no matter who's talking to me on the phone. I always had that ability. 
You know, when I worked for, for tech support for Sony and Dell Computers, I had that ability. People call up and I don't care if it was a gay hairdresser from Harlem or a wheat farmer in Ohio, uh, Iowa. It didn't matter if it was a housewife in Jersey. I could always get to their level. And whenever all the other tech supports ran into the wall and said, I can't get through to this guy. And then I got the phone. I remember it was a black gay hairdresser from Harlem, man. I said, oh, and I just I said, would you shut the F up, you half a candy ass sissy, before I come up to the organ, I slap you across, you know, your, your, your beauty parlor, you know, sweetness. Oh, it was so funny. It was my, the supervisors, they were listening to see my tactic on how I handle tough phone calls. It was so funny watching, like, these three supervisors in this booth up in the air looking down at the floor. And, they, and I looked right at them, and I was calling this guy every N-word in a book, and I was going off, and this guy was cursing everybody. So he finally got round and around with me. It was great. And uh, by 20 minutes later, he was saying, hey, man, you come up to New York, I'll give you a free haircut. You know, come out, we'll hang out together. I said, yeah, maybe I'll take you up on it, you know. So then at the end of the phone call, the supervisor said, we should have pulled that plug so many times on you. You know, we should have fired you a hundred different ways. We could have fired you. You don't talk to people like, but hell, you know what? I don't know how you communicate with people and you get the message through and you get the information. He was trying to do a spreadsheet. You know, he's trying to use Excel and he was trying to set up his beauty poll or whatever you want to call hair salon. He was trying to set it and do, you know, he couldn't figure it out. So, you know, so I just had to just curse the crap out of him to calm him the F down. I said, now hit A1. Now click this. Now don't give me no shit. Don't play stupid. It's that key on his. It was so funny, man. You know, it was, it was like, holy crap. It's like, they said, we were going to pull the plug. We should have pulled the plug, but we couldn't believe you. It was actually working. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're going to find this in our training manual. <laughs> How to talk to these people. You know, so like I said, I remember a couple of them, like I said, like this wheat, you know, farmer. I remember this, you know, because like I said, the supervisor came by and said, I don't have a clue what you two people are talking about. He says, but the farmer loved it, and um, his computer's up and running now, and, you know, he's got the spreadsheet going, you know, how much milk production, and he's happy. So keep doing what you do, Carl. So see, I've always had this ability to get down on that level. So if you're talking to an officer who is spit on, you got to understand it. You know, what? He, you know, he didn't sign up to get spit on. And you're like, you know what, if there's anything I can do, uh, you want to make a donation in your name to the Police Benevolent Association? Is there something I could do to compensate you? You know, let me give me the you know, address to Boys Town and I'll donate a Christmas present. Is there something I could do? I'm sorry that my dad disrespected you in that manner. Is there anything I could do to make it right? Stuff like that. So then when you go to court, you can see that you guys, hey, you know what? He had a bad day. Every dad's got a bad day. You know, and they'll say, oh, okay, you know what? He acted like a man. He's manning up to it. He's assuming all liability. All right. We'll go easy on this guy. He's, uh, he can't really speak for himself in court, so I was going to be his next friend. I mean, he could, but he's he's not. Uh, he's an idiot. So, yeah, well, an idiot just means somebody not in the same society. You know, it's just, yeah. you mean he just, uh, he's just out of it. He's just whatever. He's just not in it right now. He's, he's just I someplace. Mean, yeah. That's common, what you got to say. He just got to say he's not in it. You know, he, he's not with this. You know, he's just in his own way. He's, you know, he's only got a couple more spins around the sun. And he's going to be dead in the ground. Go easy on the old guy. So when I'm speaking, yeah. can I say that he's a man or does he actually have to put that on paper himself? Uh, you, you, do it. You, you just do it for him. Say, look, you know, you know, uh, you know, we uh, now we uh, um, got to bring security guard. You know, we got to bring security system in our home. Next time I have a problem like that, I'm going to dial up Brinks and let them uh, put up with this bullshit. I ain't going to get the, the public involved with this anymore. Now we're going to settle this all on the private between me and my dad. We ain't going to call the public in for assistance anymore. That was a, a mistake on my part, and I won't do it again. I like, I like that donation idea to the police force or something. I think that would be right up there, Ali. Yeah. Like I said, you're trying to man up. You're trying to make right for the wrong. That's all. You know, and you just say from now on we're we're gonna get a private we got a private security system. We you know we can get go go sign up for Brink security for a year. Show them that you signed up. So you know anytime we have a problem now with him we'll uh get some uh you know professionals in here to fucking uh help me uh you know, take care of any situation. I don't wanna get the public involved anymore. The public resources shouldn't be wasted and uh, you know, abused by his fucking nonsense. You know, so we'll, we'll from now on we'll 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 take care of it on the private side. 
And now you know better. Your dad goes nuts, let him go nuts. You know, it's his house, let him do what the hell he wants. Yeah. You know, he, he's a man. He's got the right. He wants to, like I said, man, he wants to kill himself, kill himself. You know, you, you don't bear no liability. Nobody is responsible for another man's actions. He's a man. He's 18 years old. He knows right from wrong. And that's just the way I look at it, man. I'm very, very black and white. And if you might say, wolf call, that's a little uh, harsh. No, nah, it's black and white. Law is very simple. He's liable for his acts and his inactions. That's his house. He wants to tear it down, burn it down to the ground. God bless him. He wakes up the next day, so what did I do? Huh. Oh, well. You know, that's what happens. You want to be an asshole? That's the price you pay. Believe me, I've been an asshole my whole life. Believe me, I've paid big prices for being an asshole. Oh, well. It's got me to the point where I'm at now, and I'm very happy at the place I'm at. So I was going to send a, a nice letter to each of the officers that got spit on, and then I was going to ask for a pre-trial hearing, sit down with the uh, with the <laughs> magistrate and see if, you know, show them the letters and say, hey, I'm willing to do anything. I just want my dad to get better instead of being incarcerated for two years. Yeah, yeah that's all. Because they let him go, right, they, on his own recognizance, or did they put him in your custody? Well, he... He was in the he was in the mental mental hospital for like a week after that and uh and some according to him he someone told him that the the charges were dismissed because he got admitted to the hospital so obviously he he you know was yeah, you, can't, you, can't, right. you can't prosecute an idiot right right but uh, that wasn't the case uh so he missed his court date while he was in the hospital and then got a warrant served so yeah he, well, he, turned, he, himself, he turned himself in and you know now here we yeah. are. Yeah, he turned himself in, and they said another court date. That's all. They said another court date, right? When he turned himself in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's all they do. But I, when, I they, you turn, do when you the, turn it voluntarily, yeah, when you turn it voluntarily for a warrant, all they do is set another court date. You just give them a damn good reason why you weren't there, and they say, okay, fine. We'll set another court date. There is a. Uh a law on the books in South Dakota that says if you're unconscious of the act, you're not actually capable of committing a crime. That's right. That's right. He was incompetent at the time of the wrong. But that still doesn't negate the fact that you owe a debt. Yeah, he did it. He caused, it, caused damage. Well, that's what I'm saying. Even though somebody says that I was incompetent at the time and I didn't mean to... Uh, uh, chop off Nicole Simpson's uh, head and uh, the, the the waiter boy who was bringing her glasses back to her, O.J. Simpson's still liable. Even though he wasn't in his right mind. Okay, great. You weren't in your right mind. That's fine. We understand that. But he's still liable for the debt. It's like, I don't care you drinking and driving and you're really drunk out of your mind and you plowed your car through a, a, through a, a classroom or you plowed your car through a, a Maserati dealer. You still got to fix all those damn cars. Well, I was really drunk. Yeah, and? Or I had a stroke. Yeah, and? Well, I had a heart attack. Yeah, and? You're still liable. Well, what do you mean? Nobody told you to wake up in the morning and get behind that steering wheel. Well, I was really fucked up. Good. Lovely. Who cares? You're still liable. There's no excuses. You're still liable. They say, well, I was really feeling bad. certain. No, no. Mitigating circumstances? No, I don't want to hear it. You're still liable. Did you do it? Yes or no? Yeah. Like I said, it's funny. You watch a Judge Judy, and she does, she does this. Uh, these people come on there with mitigating circumstances. Like, well, you don't understand. I was under a lot of stress. You don't understand. My boyfriend was yelling at me. You don't understand. I've been terrorized by my neighbor for the last three years. And, uh, th- and then most of the time she says, I don't give a shit. You know, you, you still did wrong. It's like, lovely story. But you know what? Nobody gives a damn. I think that's why people like Judge Judy and they kind of like, you know, like my style. You know, she's like a bitch. Tough love. She's like, I don't give a damn. That's a lovely story, but who gives a shit? And that's why I say to people, that's a lovely story, but who gives a shit? He's still liable. Your dad did something wrong. He knows he shouldn't have done it. Yes, the cops are, you know, slightly at fault, too, for stepping into your home, and they have to bear... The understanding that when they walk into a domestic situation, man, anything can happen. You know, if they if they if this happened, if he, they did this to him in public, man, they should have took him down and whooped him. Uh, yeah, somebody that, 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 that's in his house. Uh, you know what? It's the different circumstances. 
we're, we're basically a guest in this man's home. We're, you know, he's looking at us as a hostile enemy. That's we're attacking his uh, his control, his jurisdiction over his castle. We're challenging him and his beliefs that this is his under his exclusive domain, and we're going to try to capture him like a like an animal in his own home, and he's going to fight like a tiger. And they got to understand it's different than when this clown walks out into the public and takes off his clothes and starts spinning at people. Oh, you think that's going to happen? Oh, we're going to take you down. Now you're in my home. And that's what I tell people all the time. The public domain, where you walk around in public, you hire public servants to control your, you know, what you call, your, your, you know, your domestic authority. When you're in, in your home, you're under your enclosure, you're in your domestic authority. That's private. But public people say, well, what if I decide to take off my clothes and sing uh, Broadway show tunes in the middle of the street? Oh, the, the, the public has the right to hire their servants and say, you know, this is our home. This is our one big communal home. And uh, you don't like how we do things in our society, in our, in our little communal home here? Leave. Go find another town where they tolerate that nonsense. You know, like go to Woodstock, New York, or go to San Francisco, or Seattle. You know, go go, go to some desert in, in uh, Nevada where they have this Burning Man bullshit. You know, go, go act like that over there. But you ain't doing it here. You know, because this is under our domestic authority. This is under our control. And we hire public servants to protect this area. Is the domestic authority doctrine written down anywhere? Yeah, I, I pulled it, I think, right out of uh, Blackstones. Out of Blackstones? I pulled it out of Blackstones and I pulled, and I pulled, yeah, and I pulled it right, I pulled out of Blackstones and I pulled it out of Black's Law, like, I don't know what edition. I was Back then I was using, like, a... I got the third. I, remember, I, I like the fourth. I think it was the fourth. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, the fourth was really interesting. Okay. And uh, then I didn't go past the ninth. You know, the tenth was too short. The ninth was okay. Eighth and ninth was okay. But like I said, you know, that's just their beliefs. It's just like if, I, if we were in Saudi Arabia, I tell you, you know what? What part of the Quran should you read? Um, read the cow. You know what? The cow. The cow is, you know, that's where most of the information that you're going to find when you need to go to court, you're going to find it through the, you know, part of the crayon called the cow. Read the cow. You know, but like I said, in this country, no, don't don't read the crayon. Why? You're in the King James Version of the Bible. Read that. Read Leviticus. Read the Old Testament. Read that. Read Deuteronomy. That's how basically our court systems roll. If things go bad and they don't seem like they, if they are like, ah, oh, tough shit, he spit on an officer, he's going to jail, whatever, and they just, you know, don't want to. But the problem is he I, didn't I, do it in the public. He did it in his yeah. private. He's a he's a caged animal. He's protesting his domain. You know, you, you walked into his lair, into his cave. What are you out of your fucking mind? What do you think was going to happen? He's going to give you tea and crumpets? The fuck yeah. do you think was going to happen? You knew it. You put on the uniform a badge. You were crazy enough to walk into a domestic situation. You know it's the most dangerous thing to walk into. They teach you that first thing in the academy. People are back into so a They're going to fight like a fucking animal. Yeah. And then if they, you know, if the sugar doesn't work, then then I could say, it'll, you know, claim court it'll, record. It'll, it'll just work. It'll be fine. You guys got to stop, stop saying, you know, I've never ran into a man who just didn't accept the fact that another man had a bad day. And another man's trying to compensate him and saying, you know what, this is the best I could do. What else do you want from me? There's nothing else I have. What else do you wish of me? Mm -hmm. I want to go to that that court of record nonsense. Because like I said, every court is a court of record. You have to tell them expressly and according to like the common law of England or the common law of Black's Law Dictionary Edition 4, that I have the right and to evoke a court of record, which in their belief, which I also believe is your belief, means it only moves under the common law where the magistrate is independent of the tribunal. You just say yeah. court of record, they'll look at you like you're fucking crazy. I, I guarantee they have courts of record in, in, in Alaska, the Eskimos. They write their, their record, they're recording on a, on, a, on, a, on a massive igloo, a massive ice cube somewhere. So what? What rules are we running on? The Sioux Indian rules, or Arapaho rules, or Aboriginal rules, or, or Eskimo rules, Aleutians? What what Mongolian rules? Of course, they're all courts of record. Of course, somebody's keeping a record of it. But what kind of court of record? Oh, you mean um, a court that keeps record, or a court of record which I define as a court that's independent? Of the, tri- the, the magistrates and the kind of the tribunal and only moves under the common law. It has not, does not move under statutes. You just say, hey, vote court of record. 
It's a quarter of a record. What? Just by saying, I, I run, I, I, I evoke the, the banana court. They'll say the banana court of what? What banana court? You say it's like a court of record, like everybody knows what you're talking about. Like banana court. What's banana court? And it's like, I'm a man and, I, and I'm going to move my banana court into this public venue. Okay. What's your banana court? Can you tell us what the banana court is based on? Oh, if you wonder what my court of record is based on, oh, you can look at Blackstone's commentary, section 378, or you can look at a good version of it as in Black's Law Dictionary, uh, the fourth edition, where the magistrate is independent of the tribunal, and it only is going to move under the common law, which means it's going to only be man on man. That an officer or an agent of the government cannot testify unless he takes the oath as a man. They, oh, that banana court you want. Oh, okay, that's what you call banana court? Oh, okay, we call it court of record, but okay. Or we call it claims court. Oh, okay. Is that what you mean? Or we call it the people's court, like Judge Judy does. You see Judge Judy, she does courts of record. It's like, okay, I get it now. She does claims court. She makes courts of record, people's courts. Okay, court of record, banana court. Okay, whatever you fucking call it. Call it whatever you want. Just tell me, you know, what is a, what's a banana court? Yeah, well, I evoke the court of record. Okay, can you tell us what a court of record is? Okay, see exhibit A. Like I do, notice. I gave him notice of what a court of record was. Court of record is an administrative independent tribunal. I don't want anybody to view my open my case or review my case until it becomes before a jury. The magistrate and the court clerks are independent of the tribunal, which consists of I, the prosecutor, the wrongdoer, and the jury. I don't want anybody else's eyes on the case, in the case, touching the case, trespassing on the case. I gave him a notice what banana court means. I gave him a, a notice of what court of record means. I gave him a, an understanding of what Lentz court means. Just because I evoke Lentz court, I'm like, Lentz court, what? The fuck is that? And I see everybody saying, oh, uh, the Austin, like the Jesse Arsenal, you know, it's like the Arsenal court. That's right, the Arsenal court. But I explained that for 10 days what the Arsenal court was. You guys will run in and say, oh, I'm, my name's Joe Smith. I invoked Smith court into, into this federal court or into this local district court or at this fucking court. And, and they're like, Joe Smith court, what? What's Joe Smith court mean? Exhibit. Um, would it be smart to put an exhibit in that uh, separated him from his person? Uh, certificate of no. live birth exhibit? Versus no, that's ridiculous. That's the most asinine shit I've ever heard. Not necessary. Okay. You're just looking for you're just looking for an ass whooping. Well, but you have no idea. You have no idea. How, you have no idea how to follow that all the way through to the end. You just watched a YouTube video clip. You got five minute explanation of it, and now the judge is going to challenge you on it for the next three or four hours. Are you going to be able to deal with this questioning for the next three or four hours? Hit me, Carl. Hit me with him. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't do that nonsense. This is what I'm saying. This is what you've got to do. Because like I said, when I saw that man in Chicago, he said he listened to plenty of my shows, him and his brother. He took about two seconds of crap from the judge, and he folded up like a cheap suit. I mean, I was terrified. Mm-hmm. Just because you guys try to practice with this shit with me, and it doesn't mean it, when you go in a court, and that guy was like, showtime. The guy just, uh, he just fucking totally collapsed. And like his brother told you, he's got like a black belt in judicial or whatever. He's not a cream puff. He's not a marshmallow. All right, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, he's not a cream puff. He's not a marshmallow, but he totally folded up like a cheap suit. He was, it was fucking. It was a, like, like I said, watching a Rogue Runner cartoon, watching a, you know, try to get you by an anvil and a bowling ball and a lightning bolt. It was ridiculous. It, it, was, it, was, it was, it was, me and a little lawyer were laughing our asses off. You know, because the guy was like, "Wow, what, what's so funny, dude? You, you should have seen you." It was like watching a uh, like a Wile E. Coyote uh, Rogue Runner cartoon. You were like running around in circles, man, banging your own head, hitting the head with a, a, a mallet. The, the judge hands you a fucking hammer and you hit yourself in the head with it. It's like, oh, come on, you got you know, you, 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 you got to be kidding me. We've been practicing this stuff, we've been talking about it, and you go to court and it's like, you totally fell apart. The judge. Like I said, all right, I could, I could practice with you guys for years. You guys are going to walk in, you're going to do what you're going to do. Like I said, thank God, Jesse was a mom fighting for her kids, man. And that's one animal that you don't want to tangle with. So thank God she had it in her instinctively, inherently, with God given within her to fucking, you know, fight to the death. She wasn't going to panic. She wasn't going to whimper. She wasn't going to cry. She was going to go freaking nuts. And she was going to fucking, you know, make it clear as a bell that that's my effing property and you better effing give it back. And I mean effing now. 
Well, I could claim oh, that oh. they're administrating my property without right. Could I not? They're not administrating anything, dude. You're the one who called them in. So I'm administering it. You invited them in. I did. You invited Pandora. You opened Pandora's box into your life. You knew what was going to happen when you bring cops into your life. It ain't going to come out good. It ain't going to come out good for you or your dad. That's what I laugh. I laugh my ass myself when you see this, these women calling up the 911 because the husband threw a paper clip at them and said, I don't have to deal with this abuse. And they call them 911 and report domestic uh, violence. And then the next thing you know, the husband's like, you know what? I'm out of here. You know what? Fuck it. You know, then the wife's like, well, you know, I was a victim of domestic violence. So what did the husband do? Oh, he, he threw a paper clip off at me and I'm not tolerating that. Or he yelled at me and I'm not going to be yelled at in my house. It's like, you know what? Fine. Fuck it. Keep the house. I'm out of here. So what do you think that it was going to solve by bringing a third party in to, to settle your dispute? You can't handle it man to man. You got to bring a third party in over every little bullshit thing. I was just worried he was going to jump out of the car on the way to the hospital. Okay, so he jumps out of the car. Yeah. See, this, this is what, this is what, like I said, the first wife said it drove her crazy that it seemed she said that Carl doesn't care. She was like, no, you got free will. You do whatever you wish. Because it's funny, like I said, one day I pulled it, I was leaving my house. I own a little taxi company down in uh, Daytona Beach. And I was leaving like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, get ready for the morning shift. And she's sitting in the driveway, some young guy, some little, little twerpy guy in his money call and I had like wine glasses. I don't know if they did anything or not. I didn't even give a shit. I said to the guy, uh, can you back that car up? And he says, uh, who are you? And she said, oh, don't mind him. He's just my husband. And I look like some McGill Gorilla looking guy. And the poor kid was like pissing his pants. Like, oh, she didn't tell me she was married. I said, kid, 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 kid. Whoa, stop. Stop. I don't give a fuck. What I do give a fuck about is that I can't make a living. I can't make an income. You're blocking my taxi and I need to get out of this fucking driveway. Now, when I leave, you can pull back in this fucking driveway and do whatever the fuck you want. But all I know is I need to go out there and make a living. And she said, see, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't give a shit what I do. And I've all explained that, no, it's called free will. You do what you wish to do, and I do what I wish to do. And one day, I might feel like pulling up the driveway with a little Susie Cupcake in a money Carlo. And guess what? I ain't going to give a shit what your opinion is either. You do what you want. I do what I want. i got to speak answer to my maker. You'll have to answer to your maker. You don't have to answer to me. 